Welcome to Build with Google Cloud, where we build things, reference architectures that can help you make your Google Cloud journey a little bit easier. In this episode, we are going to see how you can build a tiny bank on Google Cloud. that wants to either build new or modernize traditional banking products and solutions. Where do you get started? Well, stay with me to find out. I'm Priyanka Vergadia, developer advocate here at Google Cloud, and today let's see what your options are to build a modern digital banking platform on Google Cloud. Are you ready? Let's go! Banks were born to help us manage our money. Over the years, the value provided by the bank has expanded from checking, savings, and personal loans with money transfer solutions and bill pays and rewards. Sadly, these solutions feel disconnected even today. It is time for a simpler experience with deeper integrations into the bank and each aspect of our lives so we don't have to carry so many different apps on our phones for utility, credit cards, and to manage our budget. Another example is it is a common practice for hotels and airlines to leverage banks to create their own credit cards. We should see a future where more services can be offered via banking as a service model, which is modular cloud-native digital bank architecture that offers financial products and services via APIs and microservices. Why modular? Well, because value-added services on digital platforms enable the bank to quickly adapt to emerging markets and demands by measuring success and outcomes and can allow them to build new products in a matter of days and not months or years. Now, another example here is banks are able to easily provide e-commerce retailers with a value-added service that offers instant loans or buy now, pay later checkout options on their websites. And the only way this is possible is with a modular architecture. So now that we know that we need a modular architecture, let's see what it takes to get there. Here are some of the API products that are central to embedded finance, which refers to core banking services, which includes opening an account or checking balance and making payments. But managing these API products and services has increased in scale, cost, and complexity because the legacy architecture was a one-on-one -on -one mapping between core banking system and the banking frontend, such as the website. The modern banking as a service model requires one-to-many mapping of the core banking microservices with an API layer. This new platform enables business transformation by embedding and integrating core capabilities securely with as many new systems and partners as needed, such as airlines, utilities, transportations, and telcos. I've already dropped some hints about how you could start to build this modern banking as a service platform. Would you like to take a shot at some of the components that you can start with? Share with me in the comments below. Okay, so now that we know what problem we are solving when it comes to modernizing retail banking, let's see how we solve it. Time to dive into the high level components that we need. A modern digital bank comprises of multiple business functions and capabilities. These logical components can be organized into a few high-level categories. Let's consider a fictitious financial institution, Symbol Bank. It has to have services across various channels to serve the external customers. These could include applications that directly serve the customers, the payments, the operations services for onboarding, management, servicing, and then the partner services. Then comes the integration services, which act as the interoperability and connectivity layer for all the bank's services and applications. Essentially, the technology glue that brings the core platform, data, and various applications together to orchestrate and provide a business function for the bank to its users. Then there are the data applications and platform, which include the various data pipelines, streaming, processing, governance, and data warehousing for applications and services. 
The enterprise application services make up the enterprise back office services that keep the business operating and compliant. Well, these include various foundational components of the bank, like finance and treasury, financial ERP, the governance, risk and control, the regulatory reporting and audit and compliance. Now, core application services are those core services and applications and data that are required for a bank to offer products and services to their customers. These include the core banking data models for sensitive customer information, transactions, products, and things like that, as well as all the processing and persistence of that data. Now, additional core services include card management, payments, collections, and credit and fraud risks. Then there are the infrastructure, operations, and security components that apply to all functional aspects of the bank's capabilities. These are considered foundational components to ensure the bank's customer data integrity and privacy with appropriate controls and policies that adhere to the bank's internal controls and government regulations. Now that we know what capabilities a bank needs or offers, we are ready to dive into the architecture to make this work. Well, in this part of the video, we are going to look at each of the segments of the retail banking one by one from channel services, integration services, data applications and platforms, enterprise application services, core application services, and infrastructure security and operations. Channel services include services for customer channels such as banking and customer services using contact center AI and messaging. Transaction channels such as credit and debit payments using Google Pay and partner channels which is connecting with open banking APIs and other marketplaces using Apigee API Gateway. Now, these services power the customer applications such as the ones needed for operations onboarding, management, servicing the customer, showing customers the right ads, sales, marketing, and loyalty apps. Then you have the integration layer, which comprises the API connectors on Apigee API management. These connectors take the real-time and batch unstructured and structured data, and then pass it on to the data science layer for further analysis and creating unique user experiences like personalized recommendations and propensity models or preventing financial crime with fraud prediction and anomaly detection with Vertex AI platform. You can also run high-performance computing workloads using Tensor GPUs within Vertex AI. In addition, Vertex AI streamlines the IML pipelines and provides explainable AI outputs and model governance. Now, Event and Transformation Hub also ingests the batch data through cloud storage and real-time data through PubSub messaging service and passes it on to Dataflow for transformation and orchestration. The process data is then sent to serverless data warehouse, BigQuery, and metadata that is stored in cloud storage, which is a data lake. Other teams and applications can then access this data through a unified data management catalog, Dataplex. As you can see, the data platform enables the bank to securely process and store sensitive customer data while enriching with additional data sets to gain a better understanding of their customers and products. Then comes the enterprise application services that make up the back office services, which keep the business operating and compliant. But these include various foundational components of the bank, like finance and treasury, financial ERP, visualizations, regulatory reporting, audits, compliance, governance, risk and control. We query the data with BigQuery and then use it to generate visualizations in Looker. Core application services are the core services that are required for a bank to offer its products and services to the customers. Now, these services are typically deployed as microservices on Kubernetes engine with transaction, products, and customer data on Cloud Spanner. Event-driven microservices communicate with each other using Cloud PubSub. Additional core services include card management, and payments, and collections, and credit and fraud risk. 
Then there are the core security and operational components that apply to all the functional aspects of the bank's capabilities. Now, these services include identity and access management for authentication and authorization standards, data locality, encryption and key management, data anonymization and tokenization, along with system, network, and application logs for access transparency and monitoring incidents and SLAs. I know, I know, that was a lot, but don't worry, I've linked a sample application code for you that you can run as your own bank on Google Cloud. Click and learn how it works and don't forget to share how it went for you. We just looked at a reference architecture to build a digital banking platform on Google Cloud. The different components and Google Cloud services that you can use to build those components or augment them. Wherever you start, it'll be a success and great start to gain agility in launching new features, innovation, and improving customer experience while keeping the data safe and using it to gain insights. Now it's your turn. Go build a tiny digital bank using the documentation and full sample code repository linked below. If you liked this video, then I encourage you to let me know by clicking on the like and subscribe buttons. Oh, and if you want to see me build a specific architecture in this series, let me know in the comments below. I cannot wait to build more stuff with you.